Good evening, church. Welcome to your Holy Week video. Think back a couple of days ago to the Palm Sunday observance. We are celebrating the triumphal entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem, but that wouldn't have been the only triumphal entry that day. No, some scholars believe that that same day that Jesus was entering the city, Pontius Pilate and his retinue would have been entering the city from the opposite side as well. Jesus from the east, Pilate from the west. Why did he come there on that day? Well, because Passover, Passover was coming. And this would have been a, uh, a time of great uh, worry for the Roman Empire because Passover was Independence Day, basically. Uh, well before Israel ever had a state, well before the covenant people had a country of their own, they were a people with a God and a religion. And for a long time, there were subjects in Egypt, subjects of a powerful empire. And Passover celebrates the day when they threw off, or that the day, the, the, the series of events that happened to throw off the shackles of that empire. Now, if you're an empire, you don't want your people celebrating Independence Days. And uh, in fact, the Romans had really good reason to fear this because a few years before Jesus' birth, there was a rebellion that started on Passover. And uh, you know, Rome doesn't like that sort of stuff, so Rome smacked it down hard. Uh, the emperor sent in troops. Something like 3,000 people were killed, just exterminated uh, to put down this rebellion. Passover celebrations were canceled, and from that point on, there was a strong Roman presence there during Passover. <laughs> and uh, Jesus comes riding in in a similar manner to a military procession, just like Pilate would have, but with some distinct differences. Not a big war horse, but a little donkey. Not soldiers, but misfits. Not uh, you know wearing great shiny armor, wearing average everyday clothes. And these people would have thought that he was coming to throw off Rome. They thought he was coming to start another rebellion, and this time it'd be a successful one because guess what? Just like a few days prior, he had raised somebody from the dead. He raised Lazarus from death. So they think, okay, this, yeah, Rome's got the power, but this guy has got power over death. We are so gonna crush these guys. We are gonna have, whoo -hoo, we're gonna have our own homeland again. This is gonna be great. In fact, when they were shouting Hosanna, when he walked in, Hosanna means save us, as in save us from these Roman dogs. Well, um, pretty quickly they realized that they were mistaken about this guy. He was not going to come in and not lead a rebellion. He was not going to drive the Romans out of the city, out of their country. He was going to talk about peace and love and loving thy neighbor and religious reform. Uh, he, he just took the religious leaders to task and he was debating theology and doctrine and knowledge of scripture. Uh, could you imagine if, if you know, let's look back to the, our war for independence, right? What if you, you get George Washington to be the commander in chief of the army and he just wants to debate philosophy and tells you to love one another. Imagine how that would have felt, how we, would have, how we now would look back on someone like that. Well, that's how the people were looking at Jesus. Because they expected someone to meet the violence of the Pax Romana with the violent, righteous hand of God. Well, that wasn't what Jesus was about. That's still not what Jesus is about. And so when they realized that he wasn't going to take up arms and kick the Romans out, they went from shouting Hosanna to crucify him. Palm Sunday, on one level, is about the meeting of two competing notions of power. On the one hand, you have the Roman notion of power, this strength through arms, and you will do what we say or else we're going to kill you and destroy your city, versus the sacrificial love of Jesus. And so that invites us to look at ourselves and think, what are we going to, what, what are we prioritizing? What are we going to choose in our politics, in our life, in everything? Are we going to choose the way of the empire that is violence and physical strength and subjugation? Or are we going to choose sacrificial love? Are we going to choose the tactics of Jesus who came preaching that love, that sacrifice? 
violence, domination, or sacrifice and love. That's the choice that we have as we go through this Holy Week and as we go through all of our lives. Let us pray. Gracious God, let us not choose violence, choose strength of arms to accomplish whatever purposes we are seeking to accomplish. But instead, in all things, especially when it's hard, follow the ways of Jesus. For Jesus is God incarnate, and why in the world would we ever depart from that path? In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. And be kind.